Well, you're right. There isn't a lot of civility these days, and there's not a lot on campus. I know you're a professor, and you go out, and you're an alternative voice on college campuses. Uh, I'm, we're going to play you a soundbite from uh, Candace Owens, who is the communications director for Turning Point USA. She was yeah. at UCLA uh, in the last couple of days, and she was confronting some Black Lives Matter protesters, and she had a point for them. Listen to this, and then we want to get your point of view. Sure. Victim mentality is not cool. I don't know why people like being oppressed. It's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. I love oppression. We're oppressed. 400 years of slavery, Jim Crow, which, by the way, none of you guys lived through. Your grandparents didn't. It's embarrassing that you utilize, you utilize their history. You're not living through anything right now. You're overly privileged Americans. You're overly privileged mm -hmm. Americans, she said that. And then uh, a few hours or a day or two later, Kanye West, the uh, singer, the artist, tweeted this out. I love the way Candace Owens thinks. And then now he's taking a lot of heat because he's supporting somebody who's from the political right. What did you make of what she had to say? Well, I think that Candace is is commenting about the danger of adopting a victimized victimization oppressor narrative. And it's it's a narrative that the hard left has really been pushing. And ever since Marx, of course, that the world is composed of those who are victimized and those who are the oppressors, and everyone successful is an oppressor, and everyone else is a moral victim, like a, a morally acting victim. And it's a very, very dangerous narrative, and it's certainly one that's unbelievably widespread on university campuses. To look at the world that way, to look at the world through a group identity lens, is re remote, mm -hmm. puts us back in a tribal situation and will produce conflict. It has throughout the 20th century. And so Candace is is objecting to that, and rightly so. It's an unbelievably pernicious ideology, and the universities are to blame for distributing it in large part. It's mm -hmm. really appalling and dangerous. Well, when you look at just politics in general, uh, during the last election cycle back in 2016, the Democrats did adopt a very strong ident uh, uh, identity politics program, and you know all the postmortems had said that really didn't work. So it will be interesting to see what the Democrats do going forward. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the right-wingers, the conservative types like Candace have to tell a better story than the Democrats, and the story's got to be, on well, this goes for centrist liberals, too, the story has to be that, you know, there's obviously racial differences and ethnic differences yep. and gender differences and all of that, and, and some of that manifests itself in terms of prejudice, but the fundamental issue is that we've already always regarded the individual as the measure in the West, and that's the best idea the world's ever had. And if we lose that, then it's going to be catastrophic. So everyone should be pushing against that, whether they're on the right or the left, if they have any sense. And the moderate left needs to dissociate themselves from the radical left, and this is something they refuse to do. It's conceptually difficult to do it, but it's a moral imperative. It's a moral necessity. Powerful. From Turning Point USA, Candace Owens. Good morning. Good morning. Thank Can't you imagine for having what me. the last 24 hours or so has been like. <laughs> yeah. Candace, I didn't realize you've been called every name in the book after that Kanye West tweet. Yeah, in about 10 seconds, I became a KKK member, anti LGBT. I mean, you name it, just because I think differently and I, I refuse to accept this narrative that I'm a victim. I'm not a victim. So, oh, of course. So, first, take us to the event at UCLA. Uh, you were there with Turning Point to talk exactly. to students. Some Black Lives Matter folks came in and tried to shout you down. And rather than, I mean, you, you, you took them on. Correct. We told them that they were welcome to get in line and ask any questions, but they refused to do that. They wanted to just heckle. We were there to talk about capitalism and free markets, not really that controversial. And they were up and they were screaming, F the police, as we had police sitting in the back. So um, I, I took them on because I believe that their ideas are poisonous. Um, I also believe that they are intellectually dishonest or intellectually lazy, depending on what you want to take a pick at. Because the truth is, the numbers are in, okay? Police brutality is not an issue that is facing the black community whatsoever. All right, well, here are just a, an example of some of the tweets you have received since that event took place. This one says, aside from being an insane alt-right race pimp, Candace Owens thinks Donald Trump is literally the, mess, the messiah, not you, Kanye West, so you might want to consider. They're mad that Kanye called you out on Twitter saying that he likes the way that you think. That's all he said, by the way. That was the only thing that was written in the tweet. I like the way Candace Owens thinks. What does that say, bigger picture, about society today, that you can go out there and you can say things that they might disagree with, and this is the backlash, this is the reaction? 
Well, I think it's pretty typical of the left. The truth is that the left wants to strap black people to this idea that they are victims. That's what it comes down to. They do not want black people focused on their futures. They want black people focused on their past. They like black people to be government dependent. They don't like to see black people that are free thinkers and are independent. And I think that's what Kanye West and myself represent to the black community, and that makes them very nervous. And so Democrats might be nervous about this kind of talk. You were a Democrat. Tell us what you mean when you say, don't be a victim, be a victor. There is no value in being a victim. There is no value in being oppressed. There is only value in looking forward toward the future, and that is what I preach and what I practice every single day and what I'm trying to wake up the black community to understand. For too long, we have been used by pawns, and Black Lives Matter is an example of that. They are pawns to the Democratic Party that go out and ruin their lives for something that they don't even understand, which is fundamentally false. Well, you were attacked, but so was Kanye West. Uh, this is... Uh, Bakari Sellers from CNN uh, mm -hmm. uh, chiming in, saying, Bruh, this is so disturbing. This says more about you than her. For those that, can't, that don't know Candace Owens, she thinks Donald Trump is a savior. So you're, <laughs> you're, you're apparently a race pimp who thinks Donald Trump is a savior and evil for this country. Uh, yeah, exactly. No, I, I've said publicly that I believe that Donald Trump saved the West. They are now trying to make that a biblical, trying to <laughs> misconstrue that into something biblical. So, yeah, it's nastiness, but and look, it's CNN. I don't think anybody really takes them seriously Has anymore. Has Kanye West kept that tweet up? Because there's been, he has received so many attacks, so much backlash. Is it still sitting there? It's still sitting there, and I'm not surprised. Kanye West is not really one to fold the controversy. Well, he said yeah. in a tweet after yours, I, be, you know, I support free thinkers, and right. I think that that's his idea here. You spoke freely, something that maybe wasn't supposed to be said in that community for a long time, and that's dangerous to people. Correct. I mean, if, if you look at things historically, Kanye West has really represented the battering ram against political correctness. Long before mm -hmm. Donald Trump came down the escalator, Kanye West was public enemy number one for simply trying to tell the truth to people about things that were going on. So I'm unsurprised that, um, you know, he supports me and my ideas and me just thinking freely. In terms of where you take this forward, what would you like to say to Kanye West? Um, I would just like to thank him. It was a, a moment that I will never forget. I was extremely emotional, and it was an affirmation that I needed to go forward. So just thank you, Kanye West. Yeah. <laughs> you, right. you shouldn't be bullied and threatened for having different views, Candace. Great to have you on the show this morning. Thank all thank of you the intellectual heavyweights. So all I right. said to Ruben, I said, let's have some fun tonight. Like, you know, I feel like you guys get it. We're all conservative, libertarian, but just here to kind of have our own ideas. So. I hope tonight is going to be super fun and that me and Tommy and Dave just get you guys out of your element and keep the energy up in this room. Um, so I thought a great way, first off I should start off by telling you guys all immediately that I am not actually a lesbian. <laughs> I know, I know. I showed this video. I, I love lesbians, love gay people. I, I, uh, I showed this video at a conference once and afterwards people were coming up to me like, you're such a brave lesbo. Like, they were like, we need more lesbos like you in this movement. And I was like, oh, no, that was a skit. I'm not actually a lesbian. So now I clarify every time I show that video that I am not, in fact, a lesbian. Although we do need more gay people to speak out that are conservative. I totally agree with that. Right? I am, however, a black conservative, which means that I am smart, OK? <laughs> And the number one question that I get all the time is, Candace, how do you deal with all of the insults when you are black and you're conservative? They read my comments and see all the nastiness. And I say to them, honestly, liberals aren't that good at insulting people, to be honest with you. So I'm, I'm going to read to you guys the top three things that I get the most in my inbox when people are being mean. Number one is, you sound white. So I speak English. I think that's exactly what that means, right? Okay. Not too insulting. Number two, I know you guys have heard this a thousand times, I get called an Uncle Tom, which is amazing that no one has actually read the book, because Uncle Tom is the hero of that novel. So I get called a hero. Number three is my favorite. They actually penned an entire essay. It was amazing. And it's called, you can find it on Google, Meet Candace Owens, The New Black Tommy Laren. OK. All right. So you are now calling me, I speak English, I'm a hero, and you're saying I'm young, beautiful, and successful. I'll take it. <laughs> Nothing to be upset about. 
So recently they've upped the game a little bit and they've started delivering threats and death threats and they're not really that great at that either. But one thing that was particularly upsetting is I went over to my mom's house and she and my family members have started receiving death threats, which to me is super unfair because personally, I like to be the only one that threatens to kill my family. I don't know about the rest of you. <laughs> Seriously, like every day I'm like, if you take my shirt, I will kill you, you know? So um, I went to my mom's house and my mom is a liberal, by the way. Anybody else have liberal parents? Yes, yes, be honest, give yourselves a round of applause because our holiday dinners are special. <laughs> so it's Thanksgiving and I'm at my mom's house and my two sisters are there and she's really upset, she's deeply upset and she says that somebody has contacted her on Facebook and I'm like, uh-oh, and she's like, you know, I, I, I just worry about you and the things that they said to me are so horrible and one message in particular really shook her up. A liberal wrote to her, if I had one bullet and a time machine, I would have gone back and shot you when you were pregnant with Candace. Oh, that was hilarious. Like, I instantly start laughing, which was obviously the wrong response. I mean, I just thought it was like amazing. How clever, it's, it's brilliant, right? So I start laughing, my mom gets super, super upset, and she's like, it's not funny, and I'm like, mom, calm down. No one's gonna shoot you 28 years ago, right? I mean, first off, <laughs> liberals are actually trying to give up their guns, okay? So she, she, you know, makes a face and she's super upset. And at this point, I have two sisters, an older and a younger, and we're all a year and a half apart. And they start to lean in because they see my mom's getting upset. And we have suddenly arrived into this age where we love to see our parents get super upset. Like, we just want to raise, like, their blood temperature at all times. Their blood pressure goes up. So my sisters are getting in, and I know they're about to have some fun. His mom's upset. So my sister uh, says to me, yeah, mom, like, tom time machines don't exist. And what we've started to do is my older sister creates an echo. So whatever I say, my sisters just start echoing the exact same thing. So if I say, time machines don't exist, my little sister goes, yeah, mom, time machines don't exist. And she gets extra upset. We call that the echo offense in our house. 